Hello everyone, I am Dr. Bhavamik Joshi from Aspar MDS and in this video we will learn basics of genetics and modes of inheritance. So let's start with the basic question. What is a gene? So we know our human body is made up of millions of cells and in the nucleus of these cells there are chromosomes. So a human cell has total 46 chromosomes. These are present in pairs so you can say that we have 23 pairs of chromosomes. In this pair, one we have got from father that is the, mat, uh, the paternal chromosome and one we have got from mother that is the maternal chromosome. In this 46 or 23 pairs of the chromosomes, 22 of the chromosomes are numbered. So you can see here 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 up to 22. These are the autosomal chromosomes. Whereas the 23rd pair is made up of sex chromosomes. These are called as X and Y. So males they have X and Y chromosome XY and female have two copies of the X chromosome they do not have the Y chromosome. This chromosome is made up of DNA. So you can see this chromosome is made up of DNA which is wound around a protein. This protein is called as histone. That is the basic structure of this chromosome. Now we know that cell has nucleus in the nucleus there is chromosome and chromosome is basically made up of DNA. The gene we are talking about is a part of DNA that is a segment of DNA is acting as a gene. What is function? The gene is a unit of heredity and it gives instruction that will basically make the blueprint of the body. They code for the proteins that determine all the characteristic of a person. We know that already, right? Now, we know that gene is located on chromosome. If the gene is located on the chromosomes from 1 to 22, we will call it them autosomal gene. And if they are located on the X-linked or sex chromosome, we will call them as X-linked gene, right? Now, we know the DNA, they code for proteins. How do they, like, how will they do that? So, for doing that, First, the DNA is replicated. So, the first process is replication. So, there will be two copies of DNA. From there, there will be transcription and there will be formation of mRNA. mRNA has sequence of codes present on it. Right? And then with help of tRNA, there will be translation of these codes into amino acids. And all of them, when they join together, they form the polypeptide that we call as protein. So the sequence is from DNA we get RNA and from RNA we get protein. Or if you see the sequence of the process taking place. First is replication of this DNA. Then there is transcription and then there is translation. So this process of DNA to RNA to protein or the process of replication to transcription to translation in the molecular biology it is called as central dogma. That is how a DNA help in forming the protein and the proteins are the basic unit of our body. So basically that is how DNA is helping us in forming and designing the body and the characteristic of the body. Right? Now, all humans, the chromosomes that we have, we have two arms on the chromosome. One is the short arm and the other is the longer arm. The shorter arm is called as P, that is petit. The smaller arm is P arm and the longer arm is a Q arm. Then on a particular arm, in that arm also on a particular place, we can find present of a gene. Always a gene is located on a particular fixed place only. So this specific fixed position on the chromosome of a gene is call, called as locus. Right? Now many times while reading you must have gone through like seeing that certain genes are located or they are found on 3P22.1 like this, right? So what does this actually mean? What it is trying to say? So remember, this 3P22.1 is actually telling us the locus of that particular gene on the chromosome. How to read this? So in this, the first letter, 3, the 3 is telling us that the gene is located on chromosome number 3. We are talking about autosomal gene here. <coughs> Okay, then next is P. The P is telling us that it is located on the P arm. Right, next is 22, but you should not read it as 22, it is 2, 2. 
right? The first two is telling us that it is located on the second region. So here you can see the P arm has two regions, one, two and three. Okay. So this gene is located on the second region. On that, the next two is for second band. So out of the two bands present on the second region, it is present on the second band. And then point one is showing us about sub band that within the second band, again, there are two bands. In that also, this gene is located on the second band. So the 3P22.1 gene is located and at this point on this chromosome 3, right? If we had 3P21, that means it would have been present on this band rather than this. Okay, so this with help of this uh, basic formula, you'll be able to know that what the line or what the particular location is telling us about the gene. Let's see with another example. We know that in cherubism, the gene affected is SH3BP2 and it is located on chromosome 4P16.3. So now we can tell that this gene is located on chromosome number 4 on the P arm. Then it is located on the first region and on the sixth band. And on the sixth band, it is located on the third sub band. Right? That is how you will be able to read where the particular gene is located. Now, what is an allele? So, allele is a different version of gene. We know that the chromosome, we have two, uh, we have a pair of chromosome, right? So, on each locus, we have a gene located. If they are present in a different form, we can call them as allele of each other. So, here you can see this is a pair of chromosome. So, here this capital B and the small b on both of this chromosome are allele to each other. Same way, this capital B and small b over here are allele to each other. So different form of the same gene on the same location on the chromosome are called as allele. Let's see this with an example. The gene responsible for deciding the color of eye is BEY2. Now let's say it has two allele, capital B and small b. If capital B is expressed, it will lead to formation of blue eyes. And if small b is expressed better or expressed dominantly, we will have brown eyes. Okay, this is the meaning of allele. We'll just remember this thing. It will help you in understanding the next process that we are going to explain. So humans usually have two copies or alleles of all their autosomal genes. Okay, remember this is true only for the autosomal genes. Exception to this rule is the sex link genes. Here the chromosomes on the gametes we have single chromosome so we have single gene only but when they join together so when the gametes join at the fertilization the new individual product that we will get again we'll have paired genes one from the father and one from the mother what is genotype so genotype we have two terminology remember this thing genotype and phenotype genotype is talking about the genetic configuration it has nothing to do with what is appearing to you it is about the genetic configuration. So it is used to refer to the pair of alleles at a single locus. So if the, let's say this is Q arm and there is a sixth region. So you can call it as, if this was third chromosome, you can call it as 3Q6 and whatever band it is there. So on that locus, here the genes are capital B for this chromosome. And for this chromosome, if it was sixth, let's say is this 6Q3 to whatever the marking is, here the genes are small b. So humans, because we are diploid organism, which means we have two alleles at any single autosomal locus. So this combination of these two alleles, one of which has been inherited from mother and the other from the father will make us, will make our genetic makeup. Okay, that is known as genotype. So here you can see capital B and small b, which are there. Now, if both this allele are same. Here you can see the capital B is same on both the L, both the locus and here the small b is same on both the locus. So this kind of individual we can call it as homozygous individual for this particular gene and that for the particular locus. And for a same locus, uh, the same gene is present in two different kind of alleles. We can call the person as heterozygous individual. Right? And the phenotype is how the genotype is expressed. 
what we can see the effect of genotype in a person. So it is a measurable trait of characteristics such as eye color or height. All these are phenotypes which are actually expression of the genotype. But genotype cannot be seen with the naked eye. Phenotype is what we are seeing. Okay. Now let's understand the modes of inheritance. How these traits, this phenotype are given from the parents to the child. So inheritance pattern, it describes how a disease is transmitted in the families. This inheritance pattern for a single gene disorder can be classified based on whether the condition is autosomal or X-linked. That is the gene that is altered whether it is present on the autosomal chromosomes or on X-linked chromosomes and whether they have a dominant or recessive pattern. What is dominant, what is recessive, we'll see next. <clears throat> now this kind of disorders, because there was extensive study done by the genetist Gregor Mendel. That's why this kind of disorders are also known as Mendelian disorder. Let's start with autosomal condition in that the dominant kind of disorders. That is autosomal dominant disorders. So autosomal dominant disorders are the kind of disorders where a person will inherit one copy from uh, one copy that is normal and one copy that is affected. Here you can see the darker one is the affected and the lighter one is normal. So let's say this is father and this is mother. The father is affected and for a dominant kind of disease to be affected, even if one allele is mutated, the person will become affected. There will be disease. Okay. So this person is affected. Now this person or the father is giving gene to child. Now they will give one chromosome to 50% of the child and other chromosome to other 50% of the child. So the 50% of the child who get the affected kind of gene will be affected. And the ones who are getting the normal kind of chromosome, uh, normal kind of gene, they will be unaffected. So in this case, the person inherits one normal copy of a gene and one changed copy. Let's say we are talking about this individual. So it it has got one normal and one affected. However, the changed gene, the mutated gene is dominant over the normal one. So the person will show the disease. Let's understand this with example. Let's say we have an unaffected mother, which means it has no kind of mutation in the autosomal genes. Whereas the father is affected. Even if one of the gene is affected, that means the person is going to show the phenotype. The person is affected. So here we can see both the eggs are normal but one sperm is abnormal. Here it does not mean sperm actually but this I am trying to understand you. Uh, I am trying to make it easy to understand where here you can see this blank D and this filled D. This filled D is the affected one. Now this chromosome E1 will act with chromosome S1. So because both of them are normal obviously the child will be normal as you can see this child it is small d and small d both the genes are normal same way if this gene e1 it acts with s2 in that case because s2 is altered gene and in autosomal dominant even presence of one altered gene will lead to disease so here the person or the child here will be affected same way, if E2 and S1 meet, because both of them are normal, the child will be normal. But if E1 and S2 meet, again, this person over here will be affected. So in the cases when one of the parent is affected and one of the parent is normal. So in that case, 50% of the child will be affected and the 50% of the child will be unaffected. These are the chances we are talking about. Let's talk about another scenario where both the mother and father are affected. So in the previous example, we saw that when in the autosomal dominant condition, there is heterozygous condition that is capital D and small d are there. All the person who are affected will be diseased. Okay. Here you can see in this case, both of them are both of the parents are affected. In that case, if the normal gene E1 and the normal gene S1, they'll join together only in that case the affected child or the child will not be affected in that case. 
अदरवाइज इन ऑल द सीनारियो वेर ई टू इज मीटिंग विद आदर विद एस वन और एस टू इज मीटिंग विद ई वन और ई टू ऑल द केसेस द पर्सन विल बी अफेक्टेड दिस इज ऑल्सो अफेक्टेड दिस इज ऑल्सो अफेक्टेड एंड दिस इज ऑल्सो अफेक्टेड वन थिंग वी हैव टू रिमेंबर इज हियर दिस टू चाइल्ड दे आर हिट्रोजाइगस दैट इज कैपिटल डी स्मॉल डी राइट बोथ द एल एल्स आर हिट्रोजाइगस दे आर डिफरेंट बट इन द केसेस वेर दे आर होमोजाइगस बोथ द जीन्स विच आर रिसीव्ड बाय दिस चाइल्ड इफ इट इज अल्टर्ड इन दैट केस द डिजीज विल बी सीवियर एंड देर आर चांसेस दैट द चाइल्ड माइट डाई इन द यूट्रस इट सेल्फ ओके सो रिमेंबर वेन द ऑटोसोमल डोमिनंट होमोजाइगस काइंड ऑफ पर्सन इज अफेक्टेड इन दैट केस द डिजीज इज वेरी सीवियर एंड इट कैन इवन लीड टू डेथ नेक्स्ट इज ऑटोसोमल रिसेसिव हियर वॉट एपन्स इज इफ द टू कॉपीज ऑफ द डिफेक्टिव जीन are taken by a person only in that case the person will show phenotype that is here you can see both the parents are carriers but even if one of the this particular gene is there it will not show its effect only both the genes they are present as a defective form the person will show disease but the people or the child which has one copy of this affected gene they'll act as carriers okay so you can see here that e1 and s1 both of them are normal if they join the person will be normal in case of e1 and s2 you can see here that e1 and s2 in that s2 is abnormal but because s2 is recessive this is the recessive condition it will not be able to show phenotype but the person or the child will act as carrier same way if e2 and s1 meet here again only e2 is Uh, affected gene so this child also will be a carrier but in case of a child who has got e2 and s2 in that case the person will become or the child will become affected because both the genes are altered let's see this with another example where there is genetic carrier mother and non carrier father so this mother is not affected remember she is carrier that is there is only one gene altered and the other gene is normal so in that case all the cases the person uh, or the cases where the normal genes are interacting with each other the child will be normal but the cases where the gene are affecting with the altered gene they will become carrier so we can see that 50% of the gene are or uh, 50% of the child are becoming carrier 50% of the child are remaining normal so here in in this case when there is heterozygous condition the child becomes carrier right and if one of the parent is affected that is both the genes are altered so in that case all the child they'll act as carrier because they are going to get at least one gene from mother right but because the this is example otherwise this could be reverse also so in this case the mother is going to give one gene to each of this child but the other gene will be coming from father and father is not even a carrier all its all his genes are normal only so all the child will act as carrier in this case okay but if the mother is affected and the father is carrier so what happens here that when this normal and sorry when the affected and the normal gene act with each other the person becomes carrier that is here right same way if both affected gene get together the child becomes affected with the disease okay here it is carrier and here it is again diseased so we have 50% of the people or the 50% of the child are affected and 50% of the child becomes carriers and in the cases where both the father and mother are affected so in that cases all the children are going to be affected okay that is how the autosomal recessive disease acts then there is x linked recessive trait now x linked disease mostly are recessive only only in the rare cases they are going to be dominant so we are not discussing the dominant trait here we are discussing about the x linked recessive kind of disorders so we know that this type of inheritance it refers to inheritance associated with the gene mutation on the x chromosomes now we know male has xy chromosome pair so one is x and one is y whereas females have x x that is both of them are x and there is no y okay so 
in uh, here what happens is even the female when they have xx one of them gets inactivated that is known as x inactivation only x is going to be active anyways let's see how does this x link recessive inheritance x so here you can see the mother which has x x out of this one x is affected one which is with small r okay and the father has a uh, normal x gene that means the father is not carrier so in this case you can see only this x is affected so in that case we know one thing that the father does not give x gene to the child father uh, to the male child in that case the father will only give y chromosome to this uh, son in this case so when a daughter gets one x chromosome which is affected from the mother and one chromosome which is not affected from father the daughter here will become carrier whereas the daughter who receives sorry the son who receives one affected x chromosome from mother and y chromosome from the father the child will become affected the daughter who gets one x chromosome which is normal from mother and one x chromosome from the father the child will be non carrier here same way the son who gets the normal x from mother and normal y from the father he also will be non carrier in this case so what happens is that if the pregnant if the lady is carrier and she is pregnant with the son there are 50 percent of the chances that the son will get affected and there are 50 percent of the chances that the daughter will be carrier remember that this uh, daughter will never get affected they'll also they'll only show the changes as a carrier let's see if the father is affected and the mother is normal so in that case what will happen when the father gives the x chromosome to the daughter the other x obviously comes from the mother the daughter will become carrier and the other people uh, the son who is getting x from mother and y from father they will be normal obviously both the child are going to be normal only okay and both the daughters will become carrier in this case so there is no male to male transmission because the male or the father never gives the x chromosome to the child it always goes to the daughter so always it is affecting the daughters only and the daughters are becoming carrier in the previous example we had seen how does the uh, son becomes affected when the mother is carrier okay and the female do not express the disease when they carry only one copy of the gene because it is a recessive kind of condition and the other x is going to be overriding the affected one and the changes will not be seen in the phenotypic condition okay let's see some examples of this conditions the autosomal recessive condition is sickle cell disease and cystic fibrosis autosomal dominant this is autosomal dominant excuse me the autosomal dominant conditions are huntington disease achondroplasia neurofibromatosis and gingival fibromatosis whereas the x linked recessive conditions are hemophilia g6pd deficiency febri disease and hunter syndrome okay everyone that's all from this video if you have any doubts feel free to post in the comment section all the best thanks for watching the video don't forget to subscribe to our channel for more updates